Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and Apple has released Mac OS Tahoe to the public. Now, if you're an OpenCore Legacy Patcher user with your unsupported Mac, we have some very important settings that we have to verify that are set and changed, and some of the things to talk about, because Mac OS Tahoe is now showing up in software update for all unsupported Macs, and users are flooding the support forms with downloads, version mismatch problems, file vault automatically enabling once Tahoe is installed, blocking them from getting to their data. So we've got a bunch of things that I do not want you to have to go through and especially if you've already had this happen to you I'll show you how to get out of it let's jump in and get started now first of all I want to be clear here this is important because I've seen so many users getting into trouble already today and their Macs are getting all screwed up and they're pretty upset now keep in mind we have to understand there's thousands upon thousands of users out there you know if you're watching this channel you've already disabled automatic updates and know your Mac is ready to go and you can see these pitfalls like Mac OS Tahoe showing in software update. So you are already prepared, but a lot of users are first time users and they don't understand what's going on here and they think they, they can just update to Mac OS Tahoe and they haven't seen any of the warnings that I've talked about or in the Discord, in the official page or in Reddit. We need to make sure this gets out there to understand what's going on. Mac OS Tahoe is showing up in software update because nothing can block the updates from showing in system settings anymore. You used to be able to block or ignore software updates using terminal commands and all this different stuff, but you can't do that anymore. An open core legacy patcher does not have control over that. So it is going to show up in software update no matter what anybody does. Now, what is important for us to do is we need to go into the automatic update settings and verify that these settings are up. We can leave install security responses and system files on because that has nothing to do with Mac OS Tau. That does Gatekeeper, XProtect, and all those things, and you want to leave that on. And if you wanted to leave application updates from the App Store, that's totally fine. But these need to be off. Even when download new updates is on and you have this off, it doesn't matter. You can still get into the version mismatch issue because the download does not just download, it also stages in the background and changes the system. It's got a pending update and that's what this version mismatch issue is when you go to update your root patches. So you'll go in here and you'll install a new version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. You'll try to attempt to install the root patches and this is what you'll get. Now you're in trouble. You've got Mac OS Tahoe, staged in the background and you can't do anything. Now, we want to prevent that. So you can prevent that by turning these off right now. The problem is, is that while we've talked about doing this and you think that they're off, we've already talked about some users have reported that these are being turned back on once they update to Mac OS Sequoia. So if you're on Sonoma or Mac OS Ventura and you update, these things are being turned on automatically through the setup wizard once you get to Mac OS Sequoia. So now these are on in the background. You don't even know about it if you miss that screen. And now Mac OS Tahoe could be downloading and staging itself causing these issues here. I recommend going in here right now and verifying that these are off, even if you did before. It's better to be 100% sure just in case there's a problem. We've got that figured out. Now let's talk about being able to update to a version that is not Tahoe, because you might be confused if you're trying to update to just the version of macOS that you're on. Now, if you wanna be able to just update to macOS Sequoia, macOS Sonoma, or macOS Ventura, the latest version, you need to be able to scroll down, because keep in mind, most people's software update pane or system settings might look like this, and you're like, oh, well, what the heck's going on here? Well, you have to make sure that this window is open big enough to be able to see these settings in here. So this is the also available section, which you'll see Mac OS Ventura, Sonoma, and Sequoia in. What you'll need to do is you can click this About button to see more information about the update and look what's selected in here. Mac OS Tahoe 26 is defaulted as the update. You have to go in here and deselect Mac OS Tahoe and select Mac OS Sequoia 15.7 or you'll be in a situation where you're upgrading. This is very confusing to most users. Now, if you don't click the I and you click the update now button, it will update to 15.7. This is a warning to make sure that you are 
aware of these pitfalls that Apple is putting in the software update pane. Safari now is a separate update from macOS Sonoma and macOS Sequoia, and you can install that. And you don't even have to install the 15.7 update. You can just install Safari and click install now. So select this and then unselect Tahoe 26, and then you can install the security update for macOS Ventura, Sonoma, and macOS Sequoia. I'm gonna use this opportunity to again reinforce making sure that you back up all your data on your open core legacy patch or unsupported Mac. For most people, they're not gonna have any problems, but if this accidentally happens to you, you wanna be prepared. So you can have a time machine backup or you can have just an external hard drive you can plug in and make sure all your files are backed up. Now, if you're just having machines like this, where you like me, you're just having testing and you're just having some fun and you don't really have any files in there, no big deal. But for a lot of users all over the world, they're using Open Core Legacy Patch as their main Mac, and they're using it for school, work, and all kinds of different things at home to be able to use the Mac in their lives. So this is an important step to be able to back up your data now to protect yourself in case something does accidentally happen or a setting gets turned on, you accidentally hit a button and you're updated and now you're in big trouble. So now that we are backed up, we know what's going on here, wonder if you've had this already happen to you, what do you do next? So let's first talk about the version mismatch error. And we already talked about that a little bit. And what that means is, is that if you had automatic updates enabled, Tahoe might have already downloaded it in the background and it's already staged. So you might need to reinstall your patches or you get an open core legacy patch update. And when you go to do that, that's when this error comes up. You can't install root patches, you're stuck. Okay, you can't even install macOS Sequoia 15.7 because you have macOS Tahoe staged on your Mac. Remember, macOS Tahoe is not supported by Open Core Legacy Patcher now. So even if you let it go and install, your system might not even boot properly, okay? So what you need to do if this happens to you, there's instructions on the Open Core Legacy Patcher GitHub for this situation if it happens to you. I also have a video out there you can walk through to be able to see it all in action. And basically it's canceling the up upgrade and forcing power down. If you wanna watch that video, here's my video that talks about it and walks you through the entire process. I'll put a link to that in the description. That's just one issue. But wonder now if Mac OS Tau actually downloaded it and rebooted and installed on your system. Now you're in deep trouble. Let's talk about that. So if your Mac automatically downloads and install or you somehow installed it on your Mac and now your Mac is not booting, your login screen is crashing, you can't log in, FileVault has been enabled on you and now you can't get to your data, that is the reality of what's happening out there. We, the developers and I and others have done so much to try to get the information out there that this is not supported, please don't try this. But again, some users are still getting stuck and they didn't hear about that or they're trying it out for the first time. If that happens to you, there's very few ways to get out of this. When we're talking about our data, if FileVault enabled and you can't use your password, you're in deep trouble and there's not too many ways out of that. But if it installed, and it just won't boot, that's a totally different situation. You can boot into macOS recovery, go into terminal, and all your files should be there as long as it's not file vaulted. So you can go in there, you can mount the drive, and you can do that. And you can copy all those files from recovery to your drive. You can even install to a second partition and then boot up macOS Sequoia, and then you can load up the drive right here from Finder. For example, my 2012 13 inch, I've got Sequoia and Sonoma. So let's say your Sequoia build installed Tahoe and now it's not booting. You can install Sonoma on the second partition on the drive like this. Once you're booted up, you can then mount and get all your data off of macOS Sequoia that way, which is macOS Tahoe. So there's many ways to get out of that, but it's not fun, right? So let me know in the comments if you ran into this problem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this situation. And I hope I was able to help newer users understand this. If you're a veteran viewer, you know this because you've heard me talk about this, but that's what we're trying to help. We're trying to help the newer users that get stuck in this or Apple automatically enabled 
automatic downloads and the users didn't even know about it. They know Tahoe's not supported, but they got caught up in here too. So let me know how your situation is and I will be coming out with a status update for Open Core Legacy Patcher. I will also be coming out with a Mac OS Tahoe 26 update video. So stay tuned for that and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.